the glory of the Champions League. I am so envious when I watch Champions League football, my team are not competing in it. It is the Holy Grail. It is the promised land. It is the land of milk and honey. It is everything that is perfect about football. The jeopardy, the prowess, the brilliance on display. It was a delectable medley of footballing splendour. Everything that you could want from a football match was on display at the Emirates and we do now have to get stuck into it. When I say this game had everything, it genuinely had everything. And I think the only place to start, it's the controversies. Right, let's get into it. Let's start with the Bayern Munich penalty that wasn't given, that had Thomas Tuchel so incandescent with rage. Gabriel inexplicably picks the ball up. David Rea has taken the goal kick. He rolls it into the feet of Gabriel. Gabriel, perhaps not knowing that the goal kick has been taken, just picks the ball up. Tuchel was furious. The laws of the game had been broken. Tuchel said, it's horrible, horrible. Apparently the referee said to Thomas Tuchel that it was a kid's mistake. So the question then becomes, do you deserve to be punished in the most serious of ways for a kid's mistake? Now, I think a lot of people will be arguing yes here. I think there will be a lot of people that want a draconian approach to this, where people steadfast apply the law of the game, the rules must not be broken and we must stick to the rules. And if that is your view, then that has to be a penalty. Gabriel needs to know that the ball is alive and Gabriel has therefore given away a penalty. But if you believe that, I suggest, sir, that you grow up. You cannot actually want to see a penalty given in that context. You cannot actually want to see a penalty given in that vein. It's ludicrous to actually punish somebody with the most severe forfeit for what is a legitimate mistake. Now look, players need to be switched on and Gabriel needs to take some responsibility here. I like invention. I remember Manchester United once scored a great corner against Chelsea. The corner was taken as if it wasn't taken. I think it was Rooney to Giggs. Manchester United scored, the goal was ruled out. Justice was sort of served because Manchester United scored from the retaken corner kick, but the ball was just nudged. So the corner kick was taken just over the line of the, of the corner. And Manchester United scored. Chelsea weren't ready. They didn't realise the corner had been taken. You have to be switched on. You have to be ready. But Manchester United worked that situation. It was clever from them. This isn't that. Bayern Munich haven't earned this. Bayern Munich haven't pressed for this. Bayern Munich didn't really know that this was going on. Harry Kane, who had a marvellous game, he wasn't pushing for this. This is just an error, an unforced error. And we constantly moan at referees. We say that they don't use common sense. This referee employed common sense here. The referee got this right. It would have been a bizarre decision to give a penalty in this context, and it could have had a detrimental impact on the game. If you want to see the laws of the game applied that rigidly, then I suppose you think it was a penalty. On some level, it probably was a penalty, but I think common sense has prevailed. Well done, ref. Right, number two. Did Harry Kane deserve to be sent off for elbowing Gabriel? Now, this one's tough, really tough, because the game is a contact sport. I totally understand that contact is going to happen, and sometimes elbows will be dished out. Accidentally, because of the physicality of the game, it can happen legitimately and not result in a sending off. But this one is slightly more cryptic. This one deserves a little bit more investigation. This one, we have to become Bergerac and really investigate. Did he deserve to be sent off? Now, when you study it, my conclusion is that Harry Kane actually dodged a bullet here and does deserve to be sent off. Kane should have been sent off. And can you imagine the ramifications if Harry Kane had been sent off? Let me tell you as to why I believe he's very lucky to have remained on the pitch and my reasoning to say that he deserved to be sent off. It all boils down to one thing, the glance over Kane's shoulder. He knows where Gabriel is. He knows the trajectory that Gabriel is moving in. He understands exactly what he's doing. He goes on a little recce just before Gabriel arrives, just before the ball lands. He has a little recce, finds out exactly the lay of the land, finds out exactly the contours of the ground that he's on. And he therefore times the elbow, the lyrical blow to the jaw to perfection. Just watch Harry Kane's movement just as the ball lands. He has gone on a little recce, he deduces exactly where Gabriel is and he therefore delivers a blow, in my opinion, with intent. And that should have been that. Kane sent off at the Emirates, out of the game next week at the Allianz. That would basically mean that Arsenal would progress. Can you imagine playing without Kane last night? 
They would have been down to 10 men. There is no doubt in my mind that Arsenal would have won the game. And then going away to the Emirates to face Tuba Motting rather than Harry Kane, it's a very, very different prospect. Harry Kane got away with this one. He should be so, so happy that he remained on the pitch. And Thomas Tuchel moaning, calling things horrible, horrible. I think Mikel Arteta could have a very similar complaint. Next up is should Harry Kane have been awarded a penalty when Martin Odegaard ridiculously dragged him over. Bayern Munich have a corner. Martin Odegaard is marking Harry Kane and he just bundles into him, just bundles him over. Harry Kane can't make a proper run, can't get anywhere near the ball and Martin Odegaard has dragged him to the floor. Now look, I don't want to see soft penalties given. But by the letter of the law, that is a penalty. So on this occasion, I think Arsenal have got lucky. And then <laughs> Bukayo Saka in stoppage time of a European tie at the Emirates. A European tie that is finally poised. The game is two all. Bukayo Saka is charging in on goal. Already scored. Already scored a beautiful goal. One of the best players in the world at the moment. Coursing through. Going on goal. Manuel Neuer, one of the best goalkeepers to have ever lived. Standing in his way, Bukayo Saka uses his body brilliantly, changes direction, shifts the ball away from Neuer, and then there's contact. Saka was furious, Arteta looked angry, Saka was genuinely perplexed that he wasn't given a penalty. And at the time when I was watching this live, I was convinced that it was a penalty. You will see my reaction on the show that I was on, on the club, I'm saying it's a penalty, 100% unequivocally a penalty. I've seen it time and time again. I've watched it in slow motion. And I conclude that it's not a penalty. The referee got this one right as well. I honestly don't know what happened. I feel like Bukayo Saka has done the Harvey Elliott. He's kicked his leg out. And I call it the Harvey Elliott. It's unjust. I believe that Michael Owen was actually the key instigator of this move. I think he did it to Mauricio Pochettino at the World Cup in Korea, Japan. Kicks his leg out to initiate the contact. And I think Bukayo Saka has done exactly that. In my opinion, Saka has actually rounded Neuer and he could have maintained possession and he could have potentially scored. Look, Davis was in the way. There was going to be a lot to happen after he'd rounded Neuer. But I think Saka is looking for the penalty and therefore the referee also got this one right. It's just fantastic, isn't it? The amount of time that we have to trudge through things that aren't football related. We're talking about charges. We're talking about financial breaches. Whereas the Champions League, it's just freedom, isn't it? It's just football. We can debate, we'll argue, discuss all of the major issues that happened in a wonderful game of football. And I loved it. I, as I said at the top of this video, I'm so envious that Chelsea are not in this competition and are not going to be in it next season. But what a competition it is and how finely poised this tie is. That game was sensational. And we get to do it all again in a week. In a week's time, we will be at the Allianz. And you know what Thomas Muller says? Whenever his team play in the Champions League, he will always remind his teammates they have to come to the Allianz. Regardless of the score, regardless of the opposition, they have to come to the Allianz. That is something that Thomas Muller will say to his team every single time. And Arsenal have to go to the Allianz and... They have to get something. Arsenal have to step into the fortress of a European great. A ground where we have already seen Manchester United concede four goals this season. We've seen Bayern Munich get Galatasaray out of the way and we have seen Bayern Munich overcome Lazio. Arsenal have to go to the Allianz and win. That is exciting, but it's enough intimidating. And on the build-up to this game, we were talking, weren't we? And everybody was saying Arsenal favourites. Arsenal were the best team in Europe. Nobody can score goals against Arsenal. And I was believing that until I saw the Bayern Munich starting lineup. They were just immense. And Thomas Tuchel is a perfect manager for those exact circumstances. You know, it's all very well saying that Arsenal are magnificent. But when you see a front line led by Harry Kane with Serge Gnabry on one side and Leroy Sané on the other, that will intimidate anybody and I wonder if Bayern Munich's pitfall in their domestic campaign is actually inspiring them in Europe people were saying you know the league's done it's over they're terrible they're definitely not going to win the league for the first time in 10 years and this gives Arsenal hope I wonder if it's the opposite I wonder if the fact that the domestic campaign the Bundesliga is over for them I wonder if that's allowed them to increase their determination in Europe but even if it has Arsenal should be confident. As confident as you can be going to the Allianz and winning. Arsenal should be confident. There were periods where they were very comfortable against Bayern Munich. 
In fact, if you look at the first minute of the game, it can be used a little bit as a microcosm for how Bayern Munich were feeling about the game. Saka upended within 30 seconds. Alfonso Davis books within 30 seconds and misses the tie in Germany. Arsenal should have gone 2-0 up as well. That Ben White chance. Havertz did really well. Ben White goes through, but he just shoots. Sort of, from an Arsenal perspective, disappointingly, just blazes it straight at Neuer. And it felt like a wasted chance because within, what, five, six minutes of that moment, Bayern Munich score. Who else but the main man? 15 goals for Harry Kane in 20 occasions against Arsenal. All competitions. The geezer's played against Arsenal on 20 occasions and he has scored 15 goals. And what a game Harry Kane had. He was magnificent. Magnificent. He made Gabriel and Saliba look ordinary. The two best defenders in the league. The best defensive partnership in the league. We've been saying the best defensive partnership in the world. He made them look ordinary at times. He made them look out of their depth. He made them panic time and time again. The camera cuts to Mikel Arteta. He is telling his team, calm it. He is telling his team to think, to just slow down, to breathe. Not something that we see from Arteta. And I think the emotion of the occasion really did affect some of his big players. Declan Rice didn't have a good game, certainly not a good game by his standards, and the two most reliable men on the pitch. And, in fact, David Raya hasn't put a foot wrong for donkey's years, it feels like. And suddenly he's playing as a midfielder and buying score. The Champions League, man. In fact, if you use the buying equaliser as a case study for what went wrong, you've got Gabriel, who was obviously at fault. David Raya has decided he's a midfielder. I don't know what he's doing. The player that I think gets away with it a bit is Kiwior. Like, he was on his heels. He should have been able to move in time to collect the pass, but he couldn't. And within a few minutes of that, Gabriel Saliba makes what feels to me to be his first mistake of the season. On the biggest occasion. So much of Arsenal's success this season has been built on the spine of Gabriel, Saliba, David Raya and Declan Rice. And all of them played slightly below par. You know, this isn't me calling them out. This isn't me saying that they were disgraceful. This isn't me being incredibly hostile to them because that's not reflective of what actually happened. It just shows you the standards. You can get away with it in the Premier League. You can get away with it against very good strikers. You can probably get away with it this weekend against a very good team like Aston Villa and a very good striker like Ollie Watkins. But you can't get away with it when you are playing the likes of Gnabry, Sane and Kane. That is a challenge beyond the norm. It's different. So when we're judging Gabriel and Saliba and Raya, we have to acknowledge that the vast majority of teams that they face in the Premier League aren't elite. This is a serious challenge. And when you look at that perfectly crafted goal that Bayern Munich scored from open play, wasn't it a beautiful goal? The first through ball, the second through ball, the finish. It was just a joy to behold. But if you're an Arsenal fan, I think you should be confident and I think you should be excited. I think you should be proud. Your team did the business. Not an easy team to face. A very, very difficult opposition. A manager who's been there and done it. Thomas Tuchel won Chelsea, the Champions League, within six months of being at the club. He also has been to a final very recently, losing to Bayern, in fact. Remember when he was at Paris Saint-Germain? So this is a different challenge for this Arsenal team. It's a different challenge for Mikel Arteta. But Arsenal are living up to the challenge. Fair play to them. I am already buzzing for the game at the Allianz in a week's time. Right, there we have it. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was a pulsating, dazzling game of football. I absolutely loved it and I cannot wait to watch more European football tonight. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. If you're new around here, please do me a favour. Please click subscribe. We are inching ever closer to 300,000 subscribers and I would love to welcome you into this community. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. In a bit, y'all.